All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Yep, I'm sorry, um, we've got a telescope again. So this is um, a telescope that I've had for about four months now. I bought this second hand myself out of my own money, so it's gonna be a fair, unbiased, honest review of this telescope. Um, I bought it originally because I wanted a doublet, an acromat for solar imaging, but of course, you know, you can do all sorts of imaging or visual with this, as you can see, I've got it set up for. So let's just go first through and look at what you get with this telescope as standard and what I think of it just, you know, after having had it a few months and um, general impressions. So like I said, it's an acromat. So, you know, two, two lenses there at the front. You probably can't see that very well, but there's a couple of lenses there. Um, you know, looks nice and sort of that dark green, nice coating on it. 102 millimeters aperture so four inches you get this really nice really nice long dew shield which is really you know nice and stiff that's not going to slide back so that's really cool the whole thing comes with a really good quality finish to it and um, so impressed by that you get these rings here and the rings themselves you know really solid you know just as kind of you would expect on a a pretty premium telescope and like I said these new these go for about a thousand and ninety nine dollars Australian dollars so probably about I always about halve it for um, American probably around 600 or something American um, this top bar I fitted myself that's what I've added just for my guide scope you do get a little vixen bar down here a little 20 centimeter vixen bar um, if you're going to use it for imaging, you'll probably want to mount your guide scope here because otherwise it's going to be a bit back heavy. Or you could put a bigger Losmandy bar if you wanted to onto it to get some more weight to the front. Um, let's have a look. So we've got a rotator here on the back, which is really nice to have on, a, again, a scope at this price point. So you've got a rotator there, which is really nice and smooth. You've got this rack and pinion focuser here and it's two speed. And again, that felt that feels really good quality. It's really nice and smooth. I've got it flipped over, inverted. Um, the EAF, obviously I've, I've put on myself, but it's perfectly compatible with the ZWO EAF. Got the, it's got the screws there if you wanted to put an automatic focuser like an EAF on it. Um, the focuser also, you can't see it on this side, but it's got some markings. So it's marked so you can see exactly how far out that you've come. On the end here, normally you would just get a two inch compression ring, like I've got fixed on here, and you get a one and a quarter adapter, but you don't get obviously a, you don't get a diagonal, you don't get any eyepieces with this. It's, you pretty much just get it bare bones. And of course you get a little metal lens cap, which is nice to have at the front. So in a nutshell, that's, you know, in a nutshell, that's what you're getting. And like I said, I've had this for four months now and I purchased this predominantly for doing solar imaging with. And for the solar imaging, it's been really good so far. I've had it out for probably about six or seven sessions. Um, this is my solar rig that I put into the end, into the two inch at the end. So this is a Daystar Quark. This is just used for spacers um, and it's got a little two inch IRUV cut filter on it. Of course the Quark's here and then I've got my imaging camera on the back. And like I said, no complaints for solar imaging. It's been perfect so far. It matches up really well with this ASI 432 camera. The only thing I might need to consider is I might need to buy a proper tilt plate because you do need to get a bit of tilt on your camera when you're doing solar imaging to stop those rings, those Newtonian, um, Newton's rings in your train. Um, so like I said, primarily that's what I purchased this for. However, I wanted to give it a go a visual. So last night I put this on my HEQ5 Pro mount. Now this OTA, as far as I've read, it actually comes in about, I think it's about four and a half kilograms, something like that, four and a half to five kilos, but it's very, very manageable, really manageable. So 
a HEQ5 Pro mount, no problem for this. And I think you could even go the EQ35 or something, that sort of payload capacity be fine. Um, but yeah, the mount, the mount handles it fine. Um, you just, just need to be careful, like I said before, if you are doing it for astro imaging, um, deep sky imaging, in order to balance it, you probably go on and put your guide scope here, which is why I bought this little, it's like actually a little SV bony bar and bracket that you can buy as a set. So that's ideal for going across this. Um, let's see what else we've got here. So like we've discussed, 102 millimeters, we got um, 714 millimeters at F7. So again, it's not super fast. Um, however, if you're really gonna want to do some, if you're gonna want to do some deep sky astro for it, which I did last night, on my rig, you're gonna to want to buy the field reducer flattener anyway. And this here, this little unit here on the end, that is the little 0.8 reducer flattener, which again, comes in a really reasonable price, $200 Australian dollars for a reducer and a flattener. And it worked quite well, I tried it last night. so. Um, you know, normally when you buy a scope, sometimes the reducer and the flattener itself can cost, you know, half as much as the scope. So I think that's a really nice to have a reducer there and a flattener that's kind of reasonably affordable. So as you can see, if I wanted to change this over to my imaging rig, basically I've got my imaging train here. This is a 2600 mm, and I'll show you some images later. Now, if you'd like to see the live stream of me using this camera with this telescope, just click on the link that I'm gonna put above now. And I did an hour and a half live stream where we took images of the Carina Nebula, and I stacked those images without any calibration frames, but it came out pretty good. So I will show those at the end, but if you wanna see the live stream as well, I'll put the link there. So basically, you know, that's how that would go into my imaging train basically. So no issues there and it worked, it worked completely fine with the ZWO EAF here. The only thing with the reducer and the flattener I had to take off, they do give you this little two inch extender and for the 102 version, I didn't need to use the extender because I actually couldn't get focus with the extender on as well. So, you know, it's nice to have an extra two inch extender anyway. Like I said, with that, it's gonna be very back heavy. So what I do here is I've got my SV Boney 50 millimeter guide scope, which again, you know, bought myself, but just to tell you, I've had this guide scope for years. I've had this for three years, this guide scope, and it's been great. And that's how I mount it. So now you get a nice balance. You get some weight at the front as well. What else we got in terms of specs? So rotator, we've discussed the dew shield. So yeah, with the reducer, the 0.8 reducer that we've got down here, just to let you know, um, this is gonna bring your focal length down to 517 millimeters, which is actually a really nice focal length. It's also gonna bring you down, um, you know, from F7 to F5-ish or whatever that's gonna be. So it's gonna be quite a bit faster as well, which makes it an ideal kind of focal length for imaging all sorts of objects. You know, whether it's Orion or Carina, the Lagoon Nebula, there's tons of objects that you could take with this at 500 millimeters. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, I've only really got positive things to say about this scope. Um, one thing I'll say imaging um, my deep sky imaging is I did find for whatever reason that the oxygen filter, um, I did find that the oxygen filter did give me halos around my stars. And I know from my other rigs, I didn't get halos with this exact same filter. So I'm not sure exactly why I'm getting those halos around the oxygen filter on my stars. Um, but yeah, just something to consider. I think for the price point, considering this is a doublet or an acromat, a lot of people say to you, 
if you're getting into deep sky imaging, you know, you, there's the option of going with an Acromat and then getting a mono rig, because of course you don't need to focus all colors at once as you would do with a one-shot color camera. So I tested that last night, you know, and I imaged the Carina Nebula and I imaged the Lagoon Nebula in narrowband SHO, which I think is where the strengths of a rig like this would be. And, you know, apart from those little halos, the images were really good. The, tar the stars were nice and tight. Um, so I think there's a real case there for, you know, buying a telescope like this, which is not, it's not sort of crazy expensive. Um, and then maybe spending your extra money on a mono rig. So I guess that's the question, isn't it? I mean, I started off with a triplet and now I'm imaging on a doublet. So I've almost gone, you know, in a way backwards in theory. Um, but I must say the images that came out of this, um, Carina and Lagoon that I took, I took about two hours on Carina, took about three hours, four hours on the Lagoon Nebula. Really nice, good quality images. So I guess that's a question that you'd need to ask on whether you want to go the triplet one-shot color option or the mono, um, you know, mono option and maybe save a little bit by buying a, a, a good quality Acromat telescope. I think that's just a choice everybody needs to make and I like both. <laughs> it depends how lazy I feel on the day, to be honest. But um, I think this is a really um, cool little scope. One thing I probably just, just mentioned there is obviously you'll need a dew band. For me personally, last night, I just got one of these little USB dew bands, wrapped it round behind the dew shield. That seemed to work fine for controlling the dew on the lens here. And of course it helps that you get such a long dew shield here. Um, so look, if you guys have got any comments or any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know what your experience would like with this telescope or if you're considering getting one. Um, but my, I think my, to summarize, I would say for value for money for around a thousand dollars for a good quality Acromat, um, it's hard to pick faults with this, to be honest, um, because I just think you're getting a really good value, um, really good value for money. Um, so with, Without any more rambling, thanks very much for watching and um, clear skies and um, I'll catch you next time guys. Cheers. Mm -hmm.